день, мои карантинные товарищи. Меня зовут Марк, я учусь в 11 классе Центральной музыкальной школы в Москве. И как многие из вас знают, я родился не в России матушке, а в Лондоне батюшке. Поэтому сегодняшнее видео я посвящаю Англии. Надеюсь, что мой английский за полтора года в России сильно не ухудшился. И продолжим эту презентацию. In English. So let's start with the UK government. If we start with the basics, why is the United Kingdom called the United Kingdom? Because it's not just one country, it's four countries united together. England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Which doesn't have a flag. All of these countries are led by the Queen. You might say having a Queen in a country in the 21st century is very old fashioned. but. We always hear that Britain is a democracy, and in a way that is true, because we have a parliament which is situated in London. Every five years there's a general election where the people vote for the person that they want to lead the country, to be the prime minister. So the UK government has two houses, the House of Commons and the House of Lords. Members of parliament are people that work in the government and represent a region in the UK. Member of Parliament is really hard to pronounce, so it's often shortened to MP. Each UK region and city has their own MP, and every once in a while, uh, the people who live in the constituency, in the region, they vote for their own MP to represent them in the Parliament. The House of Commons has 750 of those MPs. There are mostly three big parties representing uh, the voters. The Conservatives are the ruling party. The Labour Party is currently the opposition. They're supposed to represent the working class so back in the 20th century. Now we don't really know what they represent. And their leader has just resigned, so that's not a very good sign. And the third biggest party are the Liberal Democrats. They usually just suck up to the party that has most votes. So did you get tired from how messed up the English Parliament is? Well, things are about to get even better because our education is even more interesting. In the UK, we don't really have uchilisha or colleges where you start education from 16. Schools are divided into primary, secondary and higher education. Primary is where you study from when you're really young to about 12 years old. Secondary is from 12 to 18 and higher education are, are universities. Schools are typically divided between public and private. I went to a public school before and I must say it's, it's not easy. Typically about 40 to 50 people in one classroom at the same time. The teacher speaks on in his own atmosphere, in his own world. The students normally either just shout or when it gets worse they deal drugs. Not a lot of education gets through, but not all schools are the same. Public schools are also divided between normal academies and uh, religious schools. When I was small, I went to a Roman Catholic school called St. Vincent de Paul. Вот она моя первая школа в Англии. St. Vincent de Paul, RC Primary School and Nursery. В этой школе я проучился, по-моему, пять лет. Прямо, прямо вот с собора. Thankfully, when I went to secondary school, I went to a private school. Private schools are more expensive. There are less people studying there, and it's typically more disciplined. My school was specialized in music. It was one of the free schools in the whole of England that specialized in music. Yes, there's only free. But when I was 15 years old, I moved to Paris, and that's a totally different story. Our last subject is culture. Britain is a very cultured nation, but not in every aspect. <laughs> The best quality of Britain in culture is, of course, the film industry. Britain has loads of great actors. Let's just list everyone from Harry Potter. Britain regularly produces really good, top quality movies and series. And so we got to the sad part, music. As I said earlier, Britain only has three or four specialized music schools for kids. So normally what we have to do, we just went to a normal school and we went to a music school on Saturdays and we had to spend the whole Saturday doing something completely different. Most of the time, people who were talented in music just didn't make it. So with ballet and opera, it's about the same thing. Most performers are invited from abroad and 
they don't study in England. But England does have one strong musical ability, and that's choir. As far as I know, there are two choir schools, and they're really top-notch. The Royal Opera Choir sings a very difficult repertoire and on a very high standard. And with composers, it's about the same minimalistic kind of approach. We have four popular composers, and that's Elgar, Britton, Purcell, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Well, this kind of sums up my points about music. Thank you for watching.